What's up, Mario here. So in just a few days, Apple is going to put the iPhones into the Apple Store. But this year, there is just a tiny change happening. Apple won't be selling a mini model anymore. Instead of the mini model, Apple is going to offer us the iPhone 14 Plus, which is basically a bigger size version of the normal iPhone 14. With the iPhone 14 getting a 6.1 inch display and the iPhone 14 Plus getting a 6.7 inch display. This year, you can get the iPhone 14 Plus for just $899. But if you still prefer the 6.1 inch screen size, then you can opt in for the regular iPhone 14 at just $799. So what is actually new about these iPhone 14s compared to last year's 13 series? You will be able to see quite the theme with this year's 14 snagging some of the features from last year's 13 Pros. But compared to the Pro series this year, the regular iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Pro aren't getting those new pill cutouts, the dynamic island as Apple calls them, but they are keeping the regular notch design from last year's. The color Colors for this year's 14 and 14 Plus are Midnight, Starlight, this really nice blue finish that I really like. It reminds me kind of of last year's Sierra Blue on the Pro phones. I think Apple really nailed this color and if I was going for the regular model, I would definitely pick this one. Then you have a light purple color to probably complement the Pro's deep purple and to finish the colors off, a bright product red. Apple hasn't said much about battery life the whole presentation, but they quoted that the iPhone 14 Plus is actually going to have the best battery life out of any iPhone ever. And I totally see why the 14 Plus is actually going to have the best battery life since it still has that 60 hertz display and it's not going to be ramping up all the way up to 120 hertz like the pro phones but then again it won't be saving those frames when for example watching videos since the pro phones downscale to 24 or 30 fps i'll be actually testing the battery life differences on my own iphone 14 pro when i get it in my hands we will see the differences between just locking it at 60 hertz and enabling it to go from 1 to 120 hertz then we have the kind of controversial topic about the iPhone 14s. They are keeping the A15 from last year and they are basically using the same chip as the iPhone 14 Pros. And I think you don't have to care as much about missing out on the A16. Since Apple has showed graphs comparing it to the A13, which is a few years old, so that means probably the difference between the A15 and an A16 isn't going to be that much. The biggest upgrade in the 14 series is the camera department. And I know everyone is talking about the new 48 megapixel sensor on the pros but you don't have to worry about that new sensor on the 14 pro and just how amazing it is we can see that apple has taken all of the camera tech from the 13 pro snagged it and put it into the regular 14 which i mean is nothing to complain about since the iphone 13 pro's camera was the best on the market okay so yeah it's true you're losing out on some of the features from the 13 pro's camera like for example the telephoto lens but then again when choosing a new phone you really have to think what you are actually using on your current phone like for example are you actually using that telephoto camera to take some pictures because in my case, I would mostly use the regular camera or then switch to the ultra wide, which looks way cooler than anything else I've seen. But if you like to take a lot of portrait mode pictures, then I would highly encourage you to go for the pros with the telephoto camera. Apple has talked a lot about the brand new photonic engine that's in the 14 series. You can think of this as basically an upgraded version of their deep fusion tech, which is basically their algorithm for computational photography, which helps them to get more light out of your pictures and this will apparently help them tremendously to improve your low light photos. Also you're getting the brand new 12 megapixel front camera that's also on the 14 Pro with Apple adding autofocus to make it way easier to snap pictures either really close up or really far away from your subject. And let's not forget about action modes. This is one of the features that I'm most excited about. It has a slight downside that it crops from 4k down to 2.8k and I think all of us can understand why it does this. Basically you have have this 4k image and Apple just crops in that's 2.8k crop and it basically finds the subject that you're looking for and it stabilizes the frame around the subject and then the final result is a really stable video format and then one of the main features that you're hopefully not going to use 
is Emergency SOS via Satellite, which enables you to text an emergency service even if you don't have any cellular connection. That means if you're far away from any kind of civilization and you don't have any cell towers next to you, you still will be able to point your phone on a satellite and Apple has this really nice UI that just shows you where the satellite is and where you should actually point your phone and it helps you to establish this connection to the satellite and send over to an emergency center for hopefully helping you with your problem. Apple has also implemented a quick messaging system with the most frequently asked questions and you just give all of the necessary information to the emergency service and let them do their job. The whole 14 series has the car crash detection feature which when you crash your car your phone senses that oh something has happened you were going like 60 miles per hour and suddenly you're at zero and the microphones have also picked up some noise around you the phone will notify you that oh have you been in the crash and if you don't respond I think in like 10 to 15 seconds the phone will automatically call emergency services to go and pick you up which I think from now on is a must have feature for all phones all around those were all of the upgrades that Apple has made to the iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 plus but I'm still kind of not sure with all of these new features if I should recommend this phone to you. Since if you could find last year's iPhone 13 Pro at a discount, it would probably cost around the same as an iPhone 14 or iPhone 14 Plus. And I think the iPhone 13 Pro is kind of more worth it since you're getting that better display with the 120Hz, which would be probably my deciding factor. And you're also getting that extra camera, that premium build. But then again, you're losing on some of the new features. So it's completely up to you if you want last year's 120Hz display or you want this year's latest and greatest. And then again, there's the option for you to upgrade to the 14 Pro, which I'm personally going with. I will be doing a review on that phone as soon as I get my hands on it. You can also stay tuned for a video about the brand new Apple Watches and the AirPods Pro 2. This is going to be it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.